Welcome back, everyone. Let's get started with our next session. This will be sections six and seven of the conference, technically. I'm John Kepler uh, and am on the faculty here at Stanford University. I'm joined by one of our stellar PhD students here, Sean Shi, who's going to help me curate your questions today. So this session is going to be a little bit different from what we've had so far in the conference. Now, we're very excited to first have Martin Thompson from the University of Munster presenting his paper on workers in the boardroom, as well as Andrea Polacek from the University of Missouri presenting her paper on the influence of BlackRock's Dear CEO letters. Okay, so first of all, my thanks go to the conference organizers and the whole Stanford team for organizing this outstanding conference and being such a great host. And I really appreciate the opportunity to present our paper, which is entitled Monitoring of Payroll Maximization. What happens when workers enter the boardroom? And it is joint work with Christy Gleason, Sascha Kibak, and Christoph Atri. So what is the motivation of our paper? <clears throat> Here you can see two US Democratic presidential candidates. And in August 2018, Elizabeth Warren proposed that US firms must ensure that no fewer than 40% of their directors are selected by the firm's employees. And about one year later in June 2019, Bernie Sanders attended Walmart's annual shareholder meeting where he advocated for an employee shareholder proposal to give workers a seat on the company's board. And he argued that the concerns of workers and not just stockholders should be part of board decisions. Well, the shareholders, which is not very surprising, voted down his proposal, but then two months later at the business roundtable, a group of 181 CEOs of the largest US firms signed a concept to redefine their statement uh, on the purpose of a corporation. And they decided to move away from the philosophy of profit maximization at all costs towards shifting their focus to all stakeholders, such as employees, customers, and society. So theory generally predicts two effects regarding workers on corporate boards. So on the one hand, we have labor contract models. And labor contract models imply that the inclusion of workers on corporate boards could improve board management, could also improve the coordination with the management because workers add first-hand information to the board. On the other hand, however, economic theory suggests that the inclusion of workers could result in an opportunistic transformation of firm assets into increased wages and private benefits. That means better pay and job security. And that finally ends up in payroll maximization. So these two conflicting objectives are the central debate surrounding the inclusion of workers on the board. However, the empirical evidence is mixed and worker incentives are not in conflict in their settings. So our question is, do worker representatives on corporate boards focus on improved monitoring of management that reduces agency costs? Or do workers prioritize payroll maximization at the cost of monitoring? So let me say some words about our institutional setting. So we study mandatory worker representation on corporate boards of public German firms. So why Germany? Well, <laughs> we have a legal threshold of 500 domestic workers. Firms with less than 500 domestic workers are exempt from worker representation. Firms above this threshold must assign one third of their board seats to worker representatives. And it is important to mention that worker representatives on the board can vote without having invested any money in the firm and are elected to protect the workers' incentives and interests. So what kind of workers are actually in the boardroom? Well, these are white color workers and skilled blue color workers, but not unskilled blue color workers. So they are trained in governance and generally highly qualified. So as one example, 
90% of the German firms have at least one worker on, a, on the audit committee. That means worker representatives are viewed as sufficiently sophisticated to monitor financial reporting. So what are our settings? Well, we investigate specific transactions in the real earnings management setting. There we focus on overproduction and cuts to administrative expenditures. And we use a tax setting. And there we focus on offshore tax planning. Because in these transactions, workers' incentives to maximize payroll are strongest and in direct conflict with monitoring duties. Our financial statement data are provided by CompuSat Global, and we hand collect several data from annual reports, such as, of course, worker representation, but also the number of domestic workers, information about the overall governance quality and the foreign activity. And we estimate our regressions using quantile regressions rather than OLS, because prior research indicates that monitoring is effective in the tails of the distribution. And we use a discontinuity design. So worker representation only applies to German firms with more than 500 domestic workers. So we restrict the sample to firms with less than 1,000 domestic workers to ensure that firms with and without worker representation around this threshold are similar with respect to firm size, sales, and other firm characteristics. Okay, so by the way, to rule out concerns that our results are driven by size effects or any other structural effect around the threshold of 500 domestic workers, we conduct several placebo tests at hypothetical thresholds of 600, 700, 800, up to 1,400 domestic workers, and don't find our predicted results at these alternative false thresholds. Okay, so before we start with our main test, we present the general relation between worker representation and monitoring of accrual-based earnings management. That's what you can see on the left-hand side and tax aggressiveness. That's what you can see on the right-hand side. So in both tables, our results confirm that the relation is an inverse U-shape. So more, more precisely, what we find is positive coefficients on worker rep for firms in the lower tail of the distribution and negative coefficients on worker rep for firms in the upper tail of the distribution, which means improved board monitoring and reduced agency cost. And it is important to notice that this range of variation is ineffectively measured with OLS estimates and that using OLS regressions to test corporate governance mechanisms results in misleading inferences. But now we focus on two real earnings management transactions where workers' incentives to maximize payroll are in direct conflict with their monitoring duties. So let's start with overproduction. Here you can see the level of overproduction. Firms at the lower end of the distribution are underproducing. That means firms at the lower end are inefficient. So effective monitoring increases production and improves the operating efficiency. Firms at the upper end of the distribution are overproducing. So effective monitoring reduces the production and reduces the earnings management. So from a payroll perspective, and that's our, these are the uh, red arrows, workers benefit from overproduction because they work more hours, increasing their pay. At the lower end of the distribution, the incentives are aligned. However, at the upper end of the distribution, monitoring duties conflict with payroll maximization incentives. And here you can see the level to cut of cuts to administrative expenditures. So again, effective monitoring would result in more cuts at the lower end of the distribution and less cuts to administrative expenditures at the upper end of the distribution. And now the payroll perspective. Workers benefit from less cuts to administrative expenditures because cuts to administrative expenditures could result in yeah, reductions in wages and benefits, layoffs, or less training. So at the upper end of the distribution, 
the incentives are aligned. However, at the lower end of the distribution, monitoring duties conflict with payroll maximization incentives. So overall, if payroll maximization incentives dominate monitoring duties, then we do not expect to observe an inverse U-shaped relation that we have seen on the previous slide. So let's have a quick look at our research design. So on the left-hand side, we measure real earnings management REM with two proxies based on prior research. So we have abnormal production and um, discretionary administrative expenditures. And yeah, the primary independent variable is worker app. That is an indicator A equals one if the board of a firm includes workers and zero otherwise. And we control for several factors identified by prior literature, including also governance quality. And these are the results for our overproduction test. And we find that the coefficient on worker rep is significantly positive across all quantiles. We find no corresponding reduction in abnormal production for firms with high levels of real earnings management. So what we find is an increase in production for firms with worker representation, consistent with an emphasis on payroll maximization. And this table over here shows your, the result of our cuts to administrative expenditures. So at the upper end of the distribution, we find significantly negative coefficients on worker app. That means a, a reduced number of cuts. And additionally, for firms in the lowest quantiles of the distribution, we find no increase in the level of administrative spending cuts. So the absence of an inverse U-shaped relation in both tables shows that worker representatives maximize payroll when monitoring and payroll maximization are in conflict. And now we turn to offshore tax planning. So some aggressive tax planning transactions are particularly important for workers because they involve the risk of moving jobs to other jurisdictions. And estimates suggest that up to 42% of all German jobs are potentially offshoreable to foreign locations. And here you can see the low offshoring risk. So when there is a low offshoring risk, monitoring duties and payroll maximization incentives are aligned. And in this case, we expect again an inverse U-shaped relation between worker app and tax aggressiveness. But what will happen when the offshoring risk is high? Then we expect that worker representatives prefer to block aggressive tax planning that could offshore jobs. So at the upper end of the distribution, the incentives are again aligned. However, at the lower end of the distribution, monitoring duties conflict with payroll maximization incentives. So what is our research design here? So we have on the, one, uh, on the left hand side, you can see ETR diff which is the average industry size gap ETR less a firm's gap ETR. And we use foreign sales as a percentage to um, total sales to proxy for the likelihood that tax planning increases the risk a firm moves jobs offshore. So worker rep foreign sales low equals one if the board of a firm includes workers in the boardroom. And if this firm reports foreign sales to total sales below the median. Similarly, worker rep foreign sales high has foreign sales to total sales above the mean. So here are the results. So when the risk of offshoring is relatively low, we continue to observe an inverse U-shaped relation between tax aggressiveness and worker representation. Specifically, we find significantly positive coefficients in the lower tail of the distribution and significantly negative coefficients in the upper tail of the distribution. So when aggressive tax planning is less likely to conflict with payroll maximization incentives, our results suggest that worker representatives are associated with improved monitoring that reduces under and over aggressive tax planning. However, when the risk of offshoring is relatively high, 
then we find a significantly negative association between tax aggressiveness and worker representation in the upper tail of the distribution and no corresponding increase in the lower tail of the distribution. That means, well, workers block aggressive tax strategies when the risk of offshoring jobs is quite high. And this result is consistent with the notion that worker representatives on corporate boards maximize payroll for workers when tax transactions impact payroll and job security. So in a nutshell, what are our key takeaways? First of all, we find strong evidence that workers on boards are generally associated with decreased agency costs and improved monitoring. However, when payroll maximizations incentives conflict with monitoring duties, then we find that worker representatives prioritize payroll maximization. And we contribute to the ongoing public debate in the US about the economic effects of worker representation. And our findings could help policymakers and regulators evaluate how to include worker representatives in the US corporate governance system. Thank you.